Hi, everybody, and welcome to Exegetically Speaking, a podcast of the friends and faculty of Wheaton College, Wheaton, Illinois, and the Lanier Theological Library in Houston, Texas. My name is David Capes, and I am the Senior Research Fellow at the Lanier Theological Library and a former dean up there in Wheaton at the School of Biblical and Theological Studies. Our purpose in these podcasts is really very simple. We want to promote the study of biblical languages, Greek, Hebrew, Aramaic, so we can read the Bible more faithfully, study it more fully, and not just read it, but to live it. Joining me today on Exegetically Speaking is Dr. Carmen Imes. She's an Associate Professor of Old Testament and Program Coordinator for Bible and Theology at Prairie College in Alberta, Canada. She's the author of a wonderful book. We'll be talking about it on another podcast called The Stone Chapel, entitled Bearing God's Name, Why Sinai Still Matters, published by InterVarsity Press. Dr. Imes, thanks for being with us. Thanks for having me. You're up there in Canada in a very cold time of year, January, or right yes. after 2020, and snow on the ground and mm-hmm. such, but it doesn't sound like it's that terribly cold up there right now. It's nice and sunny today, so that always helps. It does when the sun's out. Even here in the southern part of the U.S., when the sun is mm-hmm. not out for day and after day after day, it gets a little bit, it wears on you, mm-hmm. doesn't it? Doesn't it? Yeah. We get more sun here than we did when we lived in Wheaton. So, mm. Oh, well, that's good. That's good. So Alberta and your location is just north of Montana? That's right. Yeah. Tell us about Prairie College a little bit. It's nearing its 100th anniversary. It was started in 1922 as a missionary training institute, and it has sent missionaries around the world into probably virtually every country of the world. Wow. So it's it's a neat thing to be part of a unique school with a long history. And you're located close to Calvary, I guess. Well, not close, but uh, not next door, but but the largest city, I guess. Yeah, Cal- Calgary is about an hour and 15 minutes from here, okay. so not bad. Okay. Well, we're going to talk today about a, a, t- a subject that is close to your heart mm-hmm. and close to the title of your book. Bearing mm-hmm. God's name, why Sinai still matters. It's Exodus chapter 20, verse 7. Tell That's us, right. give us a little background to this. Sure. So I did my PhD at Wheaton College in Illinois, and I I studied this verse for five years. And one verse uh, for five years. One verse for five years. <laughs> and I found quickly found that there was so much to know, so many different angles to examine. But it quickly became apparent that the long history of interpretation of this command, which I, I discovered 23 different ways people read this and understand it, 23 mm. different ways they, you know, ways they explain this kind of strange expression in Hebrew. Mm. And I, I became convinced that 22 of those 23 were mistaken and that we needed to recover what this command was really talking about okay. by trans and we need to start with a better translation of it okay so give us your translation of exodus 20 verse 7 okay so in hebrew it reads lo tisa et shem yahweh elohecha lashav that's the first half of the verse and then it repeats mm-hmm. itself so if i were to rent were to render that kind of woodenly it's do not lift up the name of Yahweh, your God, in vain. Hmm. So that, that the, the word in question is that second word in Hebrew, which is from the verb nasa. And most people have understood this verse in English to be prohibiting a way of speaking God's name or using it in some way, using it in magic or mm-hmm. or or even failing to bring a sacrifice when you worship. That's one, one proposal. But, but by and large, most people have read it as a pro- prohibition of swearing in God's name mm, using or using God's, God's name, name yeah. as a swear word. Yeah. And in fact, the word nasad has nothing to do with speech. It, it means lift up or bear or carry. Mm. So the more natural reading of the verse is you shall not bear the name of Yahweh your God in vain. And a lot of translators, I think, have come to this and said, well, that doesn't make sense. We don't bear names, so this must mean something else. And so they've tried to figure out how it's figurative or or looked at, tried to look at other parallel passages, either in the Bible or in the ancient Near East, to try to explain the expression. Hmm. 
So where do you come out? I mean, you, you, 23 different ways. Mm-hmm. You know the right one. You know the best, <laughs> you know the best one. Right. So, so in, it, tell, tell us, I mean, because I agree with you totally. I, had, I was on a talk show recently with a rabbi who, mm. who, who made the case that when you ask God to condemn something, Hmm. You know, using the the shorter version thereof, when you ask mm-hmm. God to condemn something, that's actually a form of prayer. Hmm. You know, God, hmm. well, may God condemn mm-hmm. this this or that. Yeah. You know, whatever. Yeah. Now we can obviously use that in a flippant way, but we can also right. use it and mean it very deeply. Yeah. Um, and so, and so I should say, I'm not I'm not at all suggesting that it doesn't matter how we say God's name. I yeah. think we should say it with reverence. I think we should say it in the right context. But I don't think that this command is targeting our speech. Mm. I think it's targeting, the target is much broader than our speech. Okay. It's, it's encompassing within it all of our behavior as God's covenant people. So he, this is spoken to the Israelites at Sinai. God is telling them not to misrepresent him among the nations. Mm. He has stamped them with his name. He's put his name on them to claim them as his own. And he's now telling them not to miss that opportunity and misrepresent him. Mm. It reminds me of the Lord's Prayer where we're mm. urged to, uh, or, or we, we ask God really to sanctify yeah. his name, to keep his name special. Yes. Yes, and I think when Jesus prays, hallowed be your name, I think he's actually committing himself to living in such a way that God's name would be hallowed. Yeah. Because if we if we trace this theme through the Old Testament of the people of God bearing his name, we see that they often misrepresent him. And they, they through their bad behavior, bring his name into disrepute. That's why Jesus needs to pray that it be hallowed again. Mm-hmm. God seems to be very jealous about his name, doesn't he? He does. Yeah, because w- along with his name goes his reputation. It goes That's his, right. Uh, it goes his, his uh, one, one friend of mine says, his CV. You know, it's, mm-hmm. it's, everything, that he, it's everything that he has done, everything he has said. Yep. It, it is his entirety of his being in a way. That's it's, right. It's everything. So, right. so we look forward to talking with you again about other things, but thanks for being mm-hmm. with us today to clarify what mm-hmm. Exodus 20, verse 7 is saying and what it's not saying. Mm. Thank Carmen, you. Blessings. Thank you. Thanks to Silvio Vasquez, Rebecca Larson, and Krista Sanchez for helping us to produce this podcast. Thanks as well to Phil Keggy for our music. If you want to study biblical languages, the best place you could do that is Wheaton College. They have an amazing program, one of the best I've ever seen, whether you want to be a graduate or an undergraduate student. So go to the website www.wheaton.edu and look for modern and classical languages get started today if you have questions or comments about this podcast we'd love to hear from you contact us at exegetically.speaking at wheaton.edu that's exegetically.speaking at wheaton.edu thanks for listening